the, 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 the sports animal. Sports animal. The sports animal. Back on the show when the man talks the world sports called Bill Haston. I want to run this recruiting bit by him in the age of the transport portal. And you can feel free to, you know, join into the conversation, please. Follow, uh, at Twitter, you know, respond, hit me up. At RJ underscore Young. At Tulsa Animal 97.1. Or at Bill Haston. If you want to bug Bill, I know that I do. <laughs> so, in the age of the portal, with five-star recruits saying, you know what, I don't really want to do this anymore. Or even... Even three-star recruits saying, I don't want to do this anymore. And it becoming much more public that either kids think there's a gold rush out there and that they are valuable, or that it's always been this way, that you've always had this many kids in this many programs that are just unhappy and want out. Famously, the reason the transfer portal was put into place is because so many coaches blocked transfers. And there have been, for a long time, draconian rules about transferring within conference. Bill Snyder, great coach. Snyder didn't sleep. He schemed. Also, <laughs> blocked transfers left and right. Right. You signed with this program. You stayed signed. Now, we can talk about how how far those restrictions should go because I believe some of the, some of this is exploitive, and I'm against all of that. I hate that as a as a as a deal. But Brew McCoy and Chris Steele being five star recruits, lot of news around a five star whatever. Basketball, football, baseball, whatever. I find it interesting that we're focusing on what they're doing. Now, Brew McCoy, as Bill was saying off air, that, that's just weird. We've never seen it before, but we've never had an opportunity to see it before. So, with him, yes, absolute weirdness. But the Chris Steels of the world, I think that could be a much more common occurrence. Because this is a dude that did, had a hard time saying, I want to be committed to this place or that place to begin with. And then you gave him a reason to feel unhappy. Now, if he ends up producing at USC, does anybody care that he flexed his muscle to get to Florida and to get out of Florida? I mean, Bill, why do you how are you taking this all in? Um, I don't like the. Uh, uh, I heard Masick talking about it uh, earlier in the show, and most of what he said, I agree with. I, I like that there are that there is flexibility, unprecedented flexibility provided for the athletes. Um, when there's never been any restriction on coaching movement ever and, and no payback. No, you know, I mean, other than whatever the uh, buyout is in the contract for a coach, but in regard to having to sit out or any of that. Uh, so I like the flexibility for athletes. Um, I just think that the powers that be when they envision the portal or when they came up with the concept and then, and then hit the hit the switch. When was that? October. October fifteenth, twenty eighteen. Okay, I think they were overwhelmed, probably, by the response. But I mean, if they'd really given it serious thought, they should, probably shouldn't have been overwhelmed or, or stunned by it. I don't know. I don't know. I. So apparently, this off season there wasn't much, if at all, any tweaking of that process you're still you're not a you're not a year in so that's you need, right you need to get a year of data right you need to know how this worked when it worked how it worked uh during the winter how it worked during the spring what happened during the summer and what happens in august that's also going to be very very important no but i'm sure at, at the coaches clinic though there were a lot of guys sitting at in, oh, in, the, in the hotel bar saying they hate what it. the hell yeah they and hate how it. how do we fix this or eliminate this or yeah you know they hate it absolutely yeah, you know what six figure coaches and seven mil, uh, seven figure coaches griping to me about roster management, kick rocks. Mm -hmm. This is the job. Uh, you know, Mac, Mac Brown said this best. New head coach, North Carolina. Guys, hug your kids at night because tomorrow they can be in the portal, right. which means that you are recruiting full-time all the time. And if you're not, you're not good at your job, period. If you don't feel valued and your position at your job, at your place of employment, it's because, one, either they don't think that you're valuable, or two, they think that you're expendable, which is another way of saying they mm -hmm. don't think you're valuable. Or they have their eye on somebody else altogether. I equate this to marriage. You know? Divorce rate in the country is 50%. Right. 50% for a reason. It ain't always somebody cheating on somebody else. It's look, quite literally can be you just got disinterested. Right. And you started looking around and you started going, nah, I, I could do this better on my own. Or I could do this better with somebody else. Either way, 
I feel better about not being with you. And now that the players actually get to say that out loud, I think it's interesting in that I get that you don't like the hardship waiver request being granted left and right. I also think that it's stupid that you wouldn't grant every waiver request, no matter right. hardship or not. You get four years, to play, you get five years to play four. You are not paid. You could say a scholarship has value, but even in saying that a scholarship has value, you're putting a number on it. So you're going to tell me that Daniel Jones was worth $50,000 a year to Duke if he gets drafted number six overall in the NFL draft? No, nah, it's a lie. It's a bold-faced lie. Sure. Kyler Murray was worth every bit of money that he's paid today by Arizona at Oklahoma. Yeah, he was. So what are we, why, are we <laughs> restric- right. yeah, why are we restricting movement at all? I don't know. It's it, to me the the what instead of uh, trying to attack the portal and tweak, <clears throat> change, eliminate it, you got to be good and you got to be lucky, and you got to be good in creating a culture that's welcoming and comfortable for these guys, and then you you got to be lucky in that you better have guys. You hope to have guys who during the recruiting process are welcoming and and form a bond and a brotherhood you know, with the other guys on the list and then have guys already in the program who are welcoming in a brotherhood sense too. And then if you have that, that's, that's as good as you can do with it. And if your facilities are, you know, well, and, on the same, on, on, on the A-list level, and that's, that, and that's critical. That's always going to be true at the, at the power five level. We know that. But the thing that you hit on there about depending on your, your signing class, to have a brotherhood that sticks together, so forth, so on, and depending on guys that already want to ingratiate you into the culture, mm-hmm. you got 85 scholarship kids. Somebody's going to be unhappy. Your job as a head coach to me is to go around, not necessarily making people happy, but letting them know that they are valued and they're valuable because mm-hmm. one sweet word from a head coach to a kid makes his entire semester. It just does. It does. And that's also your job. Unless, and we're both fans of the pugilism, I was a pugilist, you were a pugilist, Boxing, boxing trainers. One of the, one of the trainers I had, don't want to put him on blast because they told me this story. Well, it wasn't. I didn't want to hear it. I wanted to box. I wanted to box professionally. I wanted somebody to believe in me and to train me full time. And he said, "RG, no, I'm not doing that." And I said, "It's because I'm not good enough." No. Is it because you got somebody better? No. What is it? It's because you can do something else. Right. You're smart enough to do something else. I want somebody who this is all they got. They're going to live and die with what I tell them and how I tell them to do it. And, you know, I'm talking to my parents, and they say, oh, they, they, want, a, they want a controlling relationship. They want where, one where they don't care that they ever have a world champ. They only care that their boxer is their boxer. And I got a hard time not putting my Gundy into that category. I got a hard time not putting other coaches in that category, by the way, too. You know, like, you, I hear stories all the time about this coach or that coach saying, you're committed to me. P.J. Fleck. Minnesota. Mm-hmm. My kids commit to me. Oh, yeah? When you took six of them from Western Michigan and Minnesota, and you're mad that they're geek committing on you, and you make millions of dollars doing what you do to be mediocre at Minnesota? Right. Cry me a river, dude. So, I mean, I just, I can see what's right is right, and your culture is going to be attractive. Your culture is what's going to lead you in it's the right critical. direction. So, I would love to continue to talk with that, you. That, and, that, and that's one of the, the, the real, I mean, there, there are good, there's good and there's bad about Twitter. One of the great aspects of Twitter is how these classes bond as during the formulation of Ooh, the text. class. And Justice Hill was the best Twitter leader I've ever seen of a, of a recruiting class ever. And the, the, the guys in this 19 class at Oklahoma, it's unbelievable how much they know each other long before they're together in June in Norman. 